I'd like to uh, look into the book of Luke, second chapter, verse 7. Yeah, you've already heard it today. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Imagine for a moment this scene. You have uh, Mary and Joseph traveling. She's just about to have a baby and they go to the local hotel and there's no room. You ever been a place like that where you, you needed a motel room, you couldn't find one? I remember uh, several years ago, my uncle passed away while we were living in Sacramento, and he lived in Eureka, so I took little John up there to go to his funeral, and um, knowing that I'd have to find a hotel room when I got there, and um, it was late at night, and oh, by the way, that was before uh, booking.com and all those were real prevalent and didn't have it on our phones or anything. So you had to, uh, you know, kind of go old school. And so um, late at night and I was not sure what was going on. I couldn't find a, a place. And so I went to one place. No, no room. Went to the next one. No room. And it almost got to where I was just kind of figuring that was the way it was going to be. In fact, I thought maybe I've st uh, spent a night in my truck. But um, Finally, at last, I found what I thought was the last room in town. Now, it was kind of odd for me to be looking for a hotel in Eureka because that's where I grew up. But uh, when, when I realized that and got to thinking about that, I thought, now, that was, that really, that was scary a little bit. You know, I'm a big boy, but, but it was uh, a little bit scary to think of wh where am I going to stay tonight? Now, add to that, and I was really thankful that I didn't have my boys or my wife with me because that would just make them a little more nervous. And, and uh, add to that the fact that you have a pregnant wife that's just about to ready to have a baby, and you move into some pretty serious problems. And, and Mary and Joseph were there. They, they uh, had no choice but to, to bring this child into the world in a manger. I'm glad that as that transpired, God didn't change his mind. He didn't say, oh, all of you people aren't going to uh, treat my son any better than that. I just won't let him come into this world. But he, he allowed him to be born in a stable. He allowed him to be born there. And I'm sure that Mary and Joseph were pretty thankful when they found that place to lay that baby. Um, you know, as we look around, we see that... Uh, this world, as Brother John told us this morning, seems like that a lot of people don't have room for Jesus. We need to be very careful that we don't fall into that camp. We want to make sure that we have room for Jesus in our hearts and in our lives so that we can appreciate Christmas, we can appreciate him, and God would have us to uh, understand that the most important thing when it comes to having room for Jesus in our heart is that we have to ask him into our heart. We have to repent of our sins. And when we, we get down and repent for uh, our sins, then there's room for Jesus to come in. And as he comes in, he can make a wonderful change. He can make a, a change that we heard about tonight uh, and, and a change of uh, taking a, a guy that's an alcoholic and having him stand uh, at the back of a pew and hear uh, Jesus loves me this I know and melt into a testimony that that we heard tonight uh, uh, God wants to give those victories to you. He wants to save you tonight he wants to make sure that you have room for him do you have room for Jesus tonight in your heart um, as we consider this we want to know that It doesn't just stop at salvation. It doesn't just stop when, when we uh, get uh, into uh, a, a Christian. God would have us to understand that, that this isn't just a Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Wednesday thing. It's every day. Christianity is something that we do every morning and every night. And we want to make sure that as we look into our lives, look deeper in our lives, realize that, that yes, Jesus is number one. Yes, Jesus is the reason uh, that I get up in the morning. Yes, Jesus is the, uh, the reason that I uh, do what I do. And, um, you know, as we look deeper in our lives, we've got to be careful to not allow things to get in the way. And I'd like to 
read a little story to you I read. I won't read part of it, but I won't read the whole thing to you. This evangelist, uh, well-known evangelist, tells of a wealthy European family that had a baby and they were going to dedicate this baby, have a little ceremony at their house. And uh, so they invited all their friends and, and it was quite an affair. There was elaborate everything. There were the uh, people were dressed up and they had all kinds of uh, things going on and food, I'm sure. And as the night went on, they, they realized, okay, it's time to dedicate this child. So they, they started asking around, well, where's the baby? And the nanny runs upstairs, comes back down and says, I don't know where he is. And um, this is in the sermon on parenting. Uh, you know, so just leave that to where it is. But, but um, finally, somebody said, well, you know, I think I saw the baby laying on a, on a um, bed in one of the rooms. And so they went up and they started looking. And they come into this be uh, bedroom with a whole bunch of coats on it and hats and everything. And they looked around and sure enough, they found the baby. He was under all those coats and all those hats and all that stuff. And, and the point is, is that, you know, we can get so busy doing so much that we forget the baby. We don't want to forget the baby this year. We don't want to forget who Jesus is. We don't want to forget what Jesus does. We don't want to forget that, that he can give victory. He can help us. He can give us a reason for living. We don't want to get lose sight of that. Never allow ourselves to, to lose sight of the fact that Jesus for, uh, is the reason for all this thing. And you know, as we consider all this, I wanted to, to think about the Christmas story and, and all the players in it and, and, and just think about how they could give us a little bit of a help in figuring out how to allow Jesus to be the focus of, of uh, our, uh, our Christmas season. You know, we need to start with the angels. They, they were so, pardon me just a moment. No reason to fight that. They were, um, they were thankful. They praised God. They, they were so overjoyed with the fact that they got to announce that Jesus was here. Now, what we need to be careful of is, is that we can cross that bridge from Thanksgiving into Christmas too quickly. Brother Terry said last Sunday that that was what he called trans Transition Sunday. Well, we don't want to transition so fast we forget to thank God. We forget to give him the glory that he deserves and, and praise him for who he is. Be careful of that, that we don't just allow that to be something that we do. You know, as the angels brought this light down to this world, they took it to the shepherds. I appreciate that. I appreciate the fact that it went from the, the highest created being to some of the lowest human beings and uh, well they say some of the lowest human beings in the, on the planet at the time were the shepherds but the angels brought the story to them and then they went and told everybody they didn't have sense enough to keep quiet and that was the whole point that was a little bit uh, but anyway so they went and they told everybody that's what we need to do we need to tell everybody about Jesus about the Christmas story you might think well no, everybody knows about what Christmas is all about. They should, but not everybody does. I, I've told you this story before, but please allow me to give you the recap again. I was driving many years ago from Portland to Eureka for Christmas and picked up a hitchhiker over along about Dallas or somewhere, and I don't ever do that. I'll tell you why in a minute, but, uh, and, and so this guy jumps in the truck and the first thing he says, I just got out of jail. And I'm going, oh boy, I think I made a mistake here. And we got to talking and, and I could tell he was a little bit of a rough cut fella. And he, he tells me, he says, uh, I asked him about Christmas because it was Christmas time. And he says, I've never heard of that. I don't know what that means. I said, what about Easter? Nope. 
Well, he knew when he got done with me, but uh, the point is, is that people don't, everybody, you can't just look at them and expect they know. They might know what a Christmas tree is, but they not, might not know who Christ is. And we need to be careful to understand that we need to tell people. We have this wonderful thing that the shepherds just went out and told. They didn't hold back. They just told everybody they could see and think of. You know, we want to do that. We want to hold back and say, well, that, that fellow over there, he's never going to be a Christian. And that one is over there is never going to be a Christian. We don't do that. I remember one time in the high school in Eureka, California, I was a Christian. And this fella starts yelling at me from down the hallway. And I'm going, okay, so what's he want? And he come up to me, and this guy was a, a druggy, smoked a lot of dope and all that kind of stuff. And, and he was the furthest one you would think that would ever be saved. And he looked at me and he says, I got saved last night. And after my jaw come off the floor, I, I told him, you know, thank you. And uh, I mean, thanks for telling me and all that, you know. But, but as, as we start to look at people and decide whether they need to hear the story, forget that. Just tell the story. Just let people know that Jesus is the reason. The wise men were part of that story, too. They, as, as we think about what they did, they gave. They gave. They gave, well, they gave of their time. They gave of, of all the things that they could, the, the uh, precious gifts that they brought. And as we think about that, yes, of course, we need to consider the less fortunate in, in that light. But we know to also, maybe we can give Jesus a gift. Now, it's a little tricky because he has everything. He doesn't need anything from us. But uh, as we've been hearing around here lately, he wants us to present ourselves a living sacrifice, Amen. to give ourselves to him in a way where he can, we can serve him and, and tell others about him and, and, and do the things that the gospel would have us do. So we want to make sure we're giving to Jesus. Amen. And there's one more. It's Mary and how she pondered these things in her heart. You know, to ponder is to think about something carefully, especially before making a decision or, or anything like that. Um, a re recent conclusion, you ponder it, you think about it. A couple of synonyms are to meditate or to think over. This year, ponder Christmas. Stop for a moment and, and somebody's going to send you a Christmas card. Open it up. Don't just look for the name and then put it away. Read the card. Think about what it says. Think about the fact that, that uh, God would have us to just, just sit and listen. Just sit and talk to him. Maybe get a cup of coffee and read the Christmas story a couple times this year. Uh, just take some time to think about this plan. It's a wonderful plan. It's a wonderful thing. Take the time to, to do the things that God have us do. He wants us to have, uh, have some time with him. The Psalms 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. As we pray, we've got to be careful not to bring this list and just run through it and then get up. But we want to pray and talk to God and allow God to talk back to us. Right. To, as, we, as we ponder Christmas, as we think about this, we want to make sure that we understand that, that God is real. Yeah. And he wants to give us victories. And he wants us to, to understand that Jesus is the reason that we celebrate all this stuff. Tonight as we close, I'd just like to think for a minute that we have so much to be thankful for. And as we, as we think about this, as, as God helps us to learn to praise him a little bit more, tell this story we have, to present ourselves to Jesus, yeah. and to ponder what he'd have us uh, think about, then we can be uh, sure that this will be the great, a great Christmas. This will be one that we'll appreciate for uh, many, many years as we stop and we really consider what Jesus did and who Jesus is and uh, the fact that he is the reason. Don't forget the baby this year. Christmas.